So what the heck am I doing today? Uh, I'm gonna work on an 18 by 24 piece of stretched canvas, which I took some acrylics, a little kind of a cat orange, or just, it was inexpensive acrylic and a little bit of blue and a lot of white gesso, smeared it together, came up with kind of, kind of a nice warm neutral. Um, <clears throat> painting I'm gonna do is from a hike we took a couple of years ago uh, in um, the Tahoe area, up which used to be called Squaw Valley, is now called the Palisades. There's a trail called Shirley Lake Trail. You can hike it up there. This was a ways up, you stopped. And I just thought it was kind of a nice backlit scene with really interesting textures. Um, that's basically it. Now it's backlit, but it's backlit from up here. So it's this, the light is coming, it's not coming this way, it's coming this way. And that's why we're getting a lot of this kind of side lighting, side backlighting. Um, I'm gonna eliminate this, uh, probably keep this, probably keep a little overlapping up in here, but if I do, I'll overlap it into the sky. Uh, I'm gonna do a real abbreviated drawing, um, even more abbreviated than I usually do. Cause I just, I was actually gonna start painting without drawing. I thought now I'll kind of give, give some approximations. So the main thing, first thing I wanna do is that, do I want that to come from here or here? I'm gonna let it come from here. And it's gonna go down over and about somewhere in here. This tree is gonna, I can, I don't want it quite centered, which it is there. So it's gonna be over here a little bit, a little off to the right. Um, it's gonna come down in here. It's gonna be another tree here, another little tree here. Uh, from this point, we're gonna go back in here. And then we're gonna get this ground plane, which kind of works its way up here little overlapping. This is very abbreviated kind of quick drawing is a nice rock that I definitely want to get in here right about, oh yeah, about there. And the rest of this, then there's another rock that I do want to get in here. This one right in here, somewhere about here. Okay, that's all I'm gonna draw. And when I said abbreviated, I meant it. Uh, always start with the sky. I always go from back to front. I shouldn't say always, but I would say 95% of the time. I go from back here to up here, all right? Back here, if there is sky, it'll always be the sky. So a little chirp, a little uh, medium, a little blue, a lot of white. I'll give you my palette, just a little bit. A little Naples yellow, a little more blue, a little more white. And I, there we go. Let's, that's probably a little whiter than I want it. A little more blue in it. That ah, feels pretty good. Um, my palette, I actually have uh, some unbleached titanium, titanium white, Naples yellow, cadmium yellow hue, yellow ochre, cadmium orange hue, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, sap green, and burnt umber. You know, I said that before I started painting. That way, that way I didn't have to stop and pause and go, what the heck color is that? Um, sometimes when I have given you kind of the, the palette as I'm painting, I'm going, wait a minute, what, what color is that again? Because I'm thinking about two things at once. So kind of, a, a, again, a, a scumble type of an effect in on the uh, sky, simply due to the fact that we don't want I don't want it to be so wet that I cannot paint back into it. I want to keep a lot of the paint kind of dry uh, this time. That way, when I put paint back on top, I don't have to loosen it up too much. It's the easiest brush to do this kind of stuff with. That's why I use it. Um, People have asked me, what, what, before you started using those, what did you use? And I used, used to use something like, oh, um, a number, where is it? Say a good number 12, and just do the same thing, because it's about the same size. So you can do it with the number 12. You don't have to have this little gesso brush. I use them both. 
Well, let's get the blue as it moves over to the right, gets a little bit, a little bit deeper. Right about here. That clean's gonna be about there. There's a tree over here, but I'm gonna paint that into, into the sky. So kind of have the sky in, but I know where the sun is coming from. So I took some CAD, uh, excuse me, some Naples yellow and white, brought it back into that color, and we'll just do a little lighter, a little warmer, right? In that realm, some sky isn't a flat. I don't, it's a little bit a little lighter. There we go. A little bit lighter. I want to stroke it so I don't have a direction in it. Okay. And we definitely feel like the, that's more or less where the, uh, the light is emanating from. Okay, let's start in and get these masses in here. So we have to come up with a value mass for that before I get into all the little differences in colors and nuances and all that fun stuff. Um, and I mean it when I say fun, because it is. But before you get that, we need kind of a base value. And I want it to be kind of in the gray realm. Uh, I think I want it to be a little on the cool side. So I'm going to take umber and blue, which are blue meaning ultramarine blue. And umber, I have umber and not asphaltum. I haven't been using asphaltum later, lately. And if you ask me why, I'll tell you, I really don't know. I just, I've been using umber. So we're going to, ah, that's not dark enough. Blue and brown and white. Those three colors, let's try that. That might be okay, although it's go probably a little darker. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's, it's very neutral. It's almost not cold. It's almost, it's, it's just, it's neutral, as I said. Okay, so we're going to go here. I haven't put any medium in it, and it's real dry paint. Makes it a little bit difficult. Yeah, another another individual heard from Murphy's going Murphy's. Better him barking down there than up here, where so you couldn't hear what I'm doing. So down there, meaning in our house and not back in the studio. So I'm just kind of getting a value in here. I got a feeling I might even be a little bit on the um, light side. but I really am not positive until I get far enough along. What I see as I'm, as I'm blocking in the shadow, I'm beginning to see oranges in it. And part of the, the, the part of this painting that's gonna make it really the best that I can make it is going to be what I do within the shadows of the rocks. This big rock face. I do see a lot of worms over in that area. I took a little orange. I could have laid in some, uh, which I didn't, uh, burnt sienna. Comes off the tree. And then there's a little shrub at the top, right? There, before, yeah, that's good enough. Okay, and then it levels out, gets some nice warm. Get it dark enough. Get a tone down there right now. Now, if I use turf, I could lay this in faster, but I'd be so wet, I would have a miserable time trying to paint back into it. These are these things that you pick up over the years. So you're like, it's kind of like, playing chess where you're thinking three steps ahead. So you're thinking about your next move, so to speak. And that's why I went a little more orange here, simply because I see it. So probably a little too dark, but well, maybe not. I may be okay. So 
just move it around a little bit so we move that colors, not in just one spot. A little, I'm gonna take some ochre. Oh, geez. I went to pick up the ochre and I dipped the corner of the brush in the cat orange and it came out so strong. Be like electric uh, rocks. Ooh. That may be the next big invention. You heard of the pet rock, haven't you? Where do we work out that electric rock? The colors are different. I'm not too worried right now because there's gonna be so many different colors up in here. I see a lot of warm behind this rock. And the side of the rock is pretty dark and warm. Just right, uh, bring this over just a little bit. All right, bring it over about here. I want that rock to be a little darker and warmer because it's in front. And then I, because I'm getting rid of this, I can see a beginning of another rock back there. So I'm gonna begin to indicate that just by making it a little darker. Okay, so we got, we have to have the design going, the movement. And this is kind of shrubbery. Love saying shrubbery. Say shrubbery, I just feel like I'm in a Monty Python movie. I'm feeling what? I'm feeling that's what you mean. Yeah, that's exactly what I said. Feel the same very dry, once again. If you're too wet in the beginning, you have to be more and more wet as you lay paint on top, if you want it to sit on top and not just blend. So you're almost better off to be a little bit too dry in the beginning, meaning no medium. So very little medium, it's just almost pure paint. Now, down in here, we wanna get this one rock right in here, which has a lot of red in it, but I'm, maybe I'll throw a little alizarin into that color and we'll bring it right, I'm gonna bring it a little lower about here, kind of below that tree, here. Maybe I'm moving it a little bit over to the right. And then another rock behind it. All this comes down. And then this one rock in that one area is gonna have a lot more cool, I can see it. So I just took white and blue, mixed it right into the color I was just using, and we're just gonna scumble this particular rock in. It's a little cooler. We'll integrate those two colors. So we will have cools and warms kind of within this because there's some cools I can see right up in here. And we're gonna paint rock surfaces before we paint creases. Now I can go either way. The creases would be the crevices in between, but I like to kind of map out maybe where they're gonna be. So I'm kind of doing it by painting kind of the shapes a little darker as it goes up. So I just added the blue and brown, went a little darker. Still pretty dry, still not using any medium. The longer I can go without it, the better I'm gonna be when I go to doing any sort of refinement. actually said I wasn't gonna do this and here I am putting a couple of the, defining a couple of the rocks. Let's get this tree shape in, okay? That's pretty dark, but with, I don't want it to really stand out as too dark. Again, blue, brown, and this time I'm throwing a little bit of green into it. And I want it similar to this tone that's right there, a little bit more brown maybe. I had a little too much white in that color, a little brown. The brown warmed it up, so the blue cooled it off. And we'll kind of get the tree trunk. To begin with, 
And then as it goes up, bring a little green back into that color, a little brown. Now, so let's kind of get the feel of that tree at the top of the page. Got to be careful, I keep mixing into the sky. As I mix into the sky, I pick up the sky color, even though it's pretty dry. So you got to be careful. So we want to get this big kind of clumpy foliage, with nice edges. So the way I'm just barely holding that brush, you guys, I'm like that. Ugh. That's what happens when you have residue of that color that thrusts way up towards the, um, the ferrule of the brush. So I have to come over that now, make sure I cover it so it doesn't look too light because it's gonna look phony. And if I have to, I'll have to add some medium. Try and, I'm trying not to. There's a lot of red in those. God, you know they're green, but I see a lot of red. So you have, kind of have to forget what you know the local color is probably um, when you do this kind of stuff. Because if you stay with that, uh, it's like often when a, someone is beginning to learn how to paint and they're painting trees, they wanna paint brown trunks and green leaves, which is exactly how we think of them, all right? But that isn't how they, I mean, green is such a, uh, elusive color. It's just, and so I mix different greens. This time I just mix some orange and some ochre, more ochre. Got to be kind of bold enough and trustworthy to just put your brush down and hopefully it'll make the mark you want it to make. If you sit there and try and over control it, I've said this so many times, let the brush do the work. If you try and over control it, it's, it's, it works when you're painting architecture or specific anatomy. I'm gonna stand back. I don't have it wide enough up in here. The tree is a wider tree. So the, this upper foliage here comes out about into there. Oh, I like that last little mark I made. That kind of nice, just push it and it, it, left, it left an edge that I think is effective. And when I'm painting this kind of stuff, that's what I'm working on, you guys, is the edges. I'm really working, trying to get edges so I don't have to go back and do a whole bunch of re revision work in those edge. So I can almost let, let it look like it just happened. And it, it, it it's, is just happening. I am, you know, I don't wanna make it sound like I'm not doing any control of what, of the way a brush goes down, but I'm not over controlling it. I'm gonna have to darken that, I can tell right now. Darken that meaning the tree. So if that tree trunk, what I will do probably is take something like this filbert, I'm gonna take brown and blue together and I'm gonna mix a little bit of the solvent-free gel into it. It's the first time I've used any medium, but here's what I, I wanted to show you. I want it slightly on the warm side, so we could probably keep a little more brown in it, but we want that nice dark area. And that's why you don't wanna to go too dark too fast. If you go too dark too fast, then you're kind of in trouble. I always like to give myself what I call room. Room meaning room to go darker and room to go lighter, if necessary. And I really, I can't tell until I'm close to finished. Do I need to push more? Am I just about right? Did I push too far? Do I need to hold back? Now, what I'm doing, I'm squinting my eye at my reference and I'm squinting my eye at um, the tree itself. I mean, at, at my painting. And we wanna get, again, this little, oh, nice edge, nice edge.
feels okay. Now, but with this brush, what I'm gonna do with that nice dark is I'm gonna start to indicate some of these rocks. And this is almost a form of drawing right now. This shadow, which is quite cool. So I added more blue to that color I was just working with. Comes down here. Make too many strokes and I pick up the paint underneath. And I'll go back to the more brown color, a little warmer. And we're gonna come down. I'm gonna put a little turp into it, see if I can get a little bit better mark out of it. And This is just, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm just drawing right now. Those will be changed somewhat, just so you guys know. And I do see the value and color, particularly the color of these areas change. Right now I'm seeing it get a little warmer. And so I pushed, now I see it go a little cooler over here, go behind this rock. Whoops, I said cooler and I, you know, I immediately brought out warmer color. I did not try to. This is just a little modeling on the rock. So I'm painting surface, the same with this rock. So we're going and, <clears throat> and we're changing the surface a little bit. Okay, let's keep. Keep going, is it too easy to, to, and this is when you're on location, you really got it because you can, you can take the whole hour and a half or so that you're painting and spend all that time just doing this. Pretty soon you're done, you know, the light has changed so radically, you don't have the same image that you um, began that it made your decision. So it's very important that you keep moving a little bit of trust in what you're doing. Even if you're insecure about it, even if you're not sure, you know, stay with it. Paint yourself into a corner, force yourself to paint your way out of it. Okay, that's, that's kind of working, but keep up. Close on the time. I'm about a little over 20 minutes into it, so I don't feel too bad. I feel like I'm okay. I'm gonna get I want to get all this kind of area down in there. And you have to decide it leans towards the green, but it is still it's not a green green color. And there's that tree, the other tree. I don't want it to stand out as much as this tree. So I'm gonna mix a little bit of, of a um, light into it. In this case, I went too far with it. I mixed a little uh, Naples and it's gonna, we're gonna draw it first. Right about there, I think. Is that where I want it? Yeah, that's good enough. Okay, so that gives me where that tree is. Let's lighten it up a little bit. And there's gonna be another, this tree is gonna come down here. And there's gonna be another tree right about here. Then another one over, a little, that angle is really kind of a nice little angle. Okay, so we've got those, let's get, as long as we're doing it, let's figure this one. Just about there. 
And last but not least, right. Okay, so now we have those mapped in there. Now let's paint them in. I think I'll just go back to my fast brush. And I do use it because I can do things quicker with it. And to a degree, to a degree more, more effortless, or where it appears more effortless, I should say. Oh, see, good, good stroke. And you can't be too picky if you don't have the exact shape of the tree, as long as you're close. You know, no one's, no one, unless someone's there and said, you know, that tree was taller. Well, no one's there. So if you want to make the tree taller, it works for your design, your composition, your concept, do it. But if it doesn't, you know, stay with what you see unless you know exactly what you're going to change and why. Don't just, some people, you know, I, I, the biggest line, anybody out there that's an instructor is going to appreciate this. Uh, the biggest line I've, I, I've ever heard from students with regarding to having things wrong like that, when you say, well, you know, it just looks wrong. Well, I, I wanted it to be like that. That's the way I wanted it. You know, I, you hear that, it's like, what's the comeback for that? Well, the comeback for that is, truthfully, you need to up your taste a little bit because it's just, it's just not when you can explain why design-wise or value-wise, it's not working. It could be design, it could be value, it could be technique. That feels okay. Am I in love with it? Absolutely not. But I think it works. Could be a little fatter at the top. And we'll go with this. Oh, let's go with this tree. It's the next closer tree. And we're going to go at the top. I want to get them in there. I don't want to spend too long on these because they're not as important as that tree and the rock. And then all this wonderful light that happens at the last minute. That's what we're going to have. That's what we're building toward. You know, this is a thing when you're, when you're painting like this, you're going, oh man, I want to get, I just, I love that bright light on those. You just want to get to it so fast and you're not ready for it, or your painting isn't ready for it. So hold back. Because that's going to finish it. We, it's not ready to be finished at this stage. This is still the lay-in stage. So it's not even, I'm not even getting into modeling. I'm just laying it in. Getting the elements and the basic values, shapes, and the edges as close as I can on my first pass. It's another way to think of a lay-in is uh, think of how many passes you have to make over the entire painting in order to, to complete it. Okay, so what what do you have to make three passes? You have to make thirty. Do you have to make twenty-five. You don't know. You make as many as is necessary, as many as is necessary, and that's. It sounds like a cop out, I guess it, to it in some regards it is uh, because there is not an exact amount and it depends upon content, what you're painting, you're painting things that are just complex and difficult, it's gonna take you longer. But if you're painting things that are simple, then you have more time and you can put that time into decisiveness, deciding whether it's the right thing to do. You get more thought to it. And that's the difference between doing really something where you're more reacting or something where you're really giving it a lot of thought and care. And the key, key there is a lot because you're always going to be giving it thought and care. I don't mean to, I really don't mean to make it sound like you're not because you always are. But, but, if you, if you start giving something a lot of thought, a lot of care, and you, if you're on location or if you're in the studio and your taste and you start putting things in too soon, um, you're painting, you start to lose that control part of your painting. 
and you want to keep a freshness where it's, it feels like you're just sna smacking it in there, but you also are, are using a degree of control. It's like you're not, I, I'm making these marks where they maybe look random, but there is control. The way I'm, how much pressure, how much paint, all that stuff. So I, I've got my basic trees in there. So now let's go back. We're about not quite 30 minutes in. Let's go back to the rocks here. So I'm going to, because we're going to put a lot of time into those. And I, I've got to get enough of this built up. But let's at least get a good start in this. Okay, so we're going to get up there. Let's see. I threw a lot of turp into it. I probably threw too much. It just, it wasn't drawing well. Um, okay, we're going to go down. At this point, I see it. Yep. Down about here. And then over here. Like I said, this is drawing. When you see me brush a few times, it's painting, <laughs> meaning I'm dealing with the surface and not just the lines between. But I want to get these in there so I kind of have enough in to make it feel like I know what I'm doing. So it's a, this wonderful thin area of rock. Little stroking, right? That's too much, ah, it's too harsh. So I took all the paint off that. Just soften it, that's all I'm gonna go back. And, there we go, Make, feel, I feel more comfortable. Um, we already got the edge of that rock down. So we're gonna keep going. So I need to get enough of this in here. This is one big area down and more dark down there. And a little bit of another right here. I'm painting rock texture right now. Just kind of fussing a little bit. And then it's pretty dark right down to about this point. And warm. I'm going to throw some alizarin into that color that I was just using. And then as we get up towards the top, you can see that this rock comes over, 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 and down. And it's dark behind it. Down about here. I want to get start filling in this. That gets pretty warm. So I went back to the alizarin kind of color, maybe a little cat orange hue into it, and we'll go from right here, from right here down. These are very random kind of. It's it's almost like a type of growth or moss or dirt. I don't even know, but it's got kind of that random scattered look, so you don't want to sit and paint them like polka dots. Again, a mistake that I would see very often people make is doing exactly what I just said, painting them like, I see this, all the little stabbing stuff, so I'm going to put it in there like that, and all of a sudden, the whole piece starts to die on you. Got to go behind this rock, up a little bit, right about here, up kind of random, before we get to that rock. As this rock goes down, it gets a little warmer, so I've just taken the same color. It's already been diluted with the, with the other pigment that's in there. So we're starting to get a little bit of the, the feeling of that texture. Um, I wanna find this rock and it, it looks like it's right between these two trees. I have it placed here, not too bad up about there, and we'll go behind it, like I said, we'll go down, and then down this way. 
And then that's a big shrub right there. So I'm gonna throw a little green into that same color and value that I was just using. Oops, picked up a light again. There we go. It's a little greener, went too green on me. So I throw a lizard in back. Okay, there we go. I'm painting the shadow, this. And then I'm eventually gonna go up around that rock, which is right there. Get rid of that. I don't want that. And then this comes down and on the other side of this rock is where we get a lot of, the, it's warm. So I've got a nice warm color in there, works well. It's a little more orange thrown into it this time. A little bit back to the bluer, darker color because I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna define that other rock there, there, and then a little one that comes out in front of it. I want, it, I want this to blend because this is standing out way too much. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take some more of my orange color and I'm just going to push it right back into that base color that I threw. And we're just going to bring it down and let it eventually dissolve. So we almost don't see where one starts and another one stops. Now in this rock, which is quite cool, there is a warm side to it. So I've just taken the warm color I've got on my brush that mix, and I'm just pushing it right back. There was a little orange. So I'm just pushing right back into that base value that I threw in there. Okay, and then back behind it again, I kind of wipe that out. So let's reestablish the dark here. Okay, that, then we're gonna find, that goes up to about, about here. And then we get the shadow side of this rock and the crevice down here it goes up over and then that rock comes all the way up here over and it's warm. So I'm gonna go burnt umber right into the color we're using. Plain old burnt umber. Burnt umber is warm. It's your warmest dark. That and alizarin are your two warmest darks on your palette. That's right, I'm gonna bring this other rock out. Get, start to get some of the form back in here, warmer. You know, I'm using this brush. I probably should be switching back to my, I go faster with it. Wanna be a little warmer back here, but without using the darkness. So we're gonna make it more of that. Oh, I see a real dusty kind of a violet in there too. So we're gonna, we're gonna try and get all that in there. A lot of this is gonna define with lights when I come in with lights at the very end. So I'm, well, I've got this warm on the brush. I'm gonna go into these rocks. I'm gonna see, I see a little warm reflected light down here. Where else? Down here on the undersides. Now that I'm just looking, all these rocks, these rocks face the sky, but when they don't face the sky, they face down and they pick up some of the warm reflected light that's down below. Not that you have to know all that. I, I like to. So I'm taking some burnt umber here, by the way. It's plain old burnt umber because it's a very red compared to a lot of the other colors. And as this goes behind this rock, I want it to darken. You notice I haven't hit the light surfaces yet. And several of you are probably wondering when I'm gonna do that. About 10 more minutes. Okay, this rock here, pretty dark and pretty warm. So I've gone really pulled some alizarin and some umber. And we're gonna go right there. Whew. Too far. And let's start it with that. And then the rock behind it. And let me get this. There's some cool greens that are gonna happen down in here. A lot of really interesting colors, which I am no way gonna have the time to get into, but I'll get into as much as I can. There's two rocks there, it's warm, warm, 
Again, painting the surfaces, not the lights on it. Yeah. Mary, and then there's, go ahead. Are you using a lot of, um, uh, with the darks, they look like they're very fluid. It looks like it's very fluid. No, it's not. Using a lot. It's not. I, I used a little bit more than I wanted to um, initially. A little bit more? Uh, yeah. What? Uh, I, I, turf, actually. Oh. Simply because it wasn't going on well with all the other. You know, you try one thing and if it doesn't work, you try something else. Or the other way to think of it as insanity is <laughs> trying something over and over, the same thing over and over, expecting different results. Same thing. Gonna go dark. Look how dark we can get back in here. Dark and warm. Now this rock is too light. So I'm just there we go. I'm knocking it back a little bit. Side of this rock looks about right. Down below on the ground, we want to go here and then a shadow. It's gonna be behind all this, by the way, you guys. Right here. I just spotted that warm, dark shadow. Right there. Okay. So let's go up in here, start with some color. I'm going to go kind of a violet. Like I said, I saw kind of an interesting violet. So I'm going to mix it. Blue. Alizarin, and I still have residue of other colors, but I'm gonna try this. That looks about right, maybe a little more blue. The more colors you can see that you can paint, it will give your, your particularly painting of what most people think of as monochromatic, meaning rocks. Most people think of rocks as being a color, you know? Rocks are all kinds of colors, like trees, like nature. Let's see, where else do I see that color? I, I'll tell you where I see it. All right, I lost a little too much of it, so I'm remixing it. I never worry about whether I mix exactly the same color. It's not important. This is a gray violet. I want to bring it into this part of the rock here. Nope, I want to go a little lighter and a little bluer. So what do I mix? I mix a little light, a little blue, too light. Or that might just be a vertical, I mean, a horizontal stroke. Yeah, that's not bad. I had a point, I don't know if you guys can see the subtlety. That's, that's actually pretty good. I mean, color wise. And because the paint is dry enough, like that, that's a little too light. I, one thing I wanna do is add some cooler semi-violet blue violet areas up in here, down in here, do it again. So I have a base, but I also, now I'm getting, and if I don't hit everything, it's almost better because some of that base color will flow through and actually add a little character. I'm gonna step back for a second. Okay. I step back. I said, okay, and now I pray. No, now I, um, it's, it's all right. The colors look pretty good. There's, there's enough variation, it's starting to work. We're starting to get the color variation. And that was my premise for choosing this image, was literally the subtle colors in the shadows of the rocks. How do you paint a shadow side rather than paint it one big old flat color and make it interesting. Backlighting painting is you spend most of your time setting up everything that's in shadow. I'm gonna start adding a little bit of light in a little bit, just because I wanna get, start getting the lights in at the halfway point, because I have a lot of textural qualities I've got to deal with. That is what's going to take the most time. Really trying to come up with the appropriate textural qualities and hitting the right color, right value at the same time. So once you get to, once you, you guys get really good at establishing good color and good value, 
then your tech, then you start concentrating even more on some of the technical sides of, of your painting. But initially, until you get good color, good value, you know, if your technique is great, but you have bad color, bad value, who the hell cares? Because it isn't working. So in order of what should I learn? Well, drawing, basic drawing, basic drawing. Um, depending on, you know, if you're gonna do, a, if you're gonna be a figurative artist, yeah, you better put your time into drawing, proportion, that kind of thing. But generally speaking, you wanna, you wanna put your time into basic drawing always, and never uh, composition, these are things. Then once you get, then you start worrying about color, value, and form. All right. And once we get the color value and form down, then you then you get even more into technique. But you'll that doesn't mean you abandon color value and form. It just means that you're putting a lot of a lot of your time into some of the technical problems that you might be having. A little more warm. Okay, so I don't kind of like that. That should be kind of warm back there. And then you got this other rock coming up on the side that I'm going to do, and it's going to be right here. Okay, let's start. I'm trying to warm the color up now. For that, I'm using ochre and cat orange hue. I'm, I'm setting up right now. And what am I setting up for? The lights. Because the lights help, is what's going to help define the form. I've kind of indicated it roughly in shadow. And the lights will clarify it. I hope, you know, that's on my wish list. But the lights make sense out of it all for me. I see cooler variations, so it's not all that reddish tone that I initially started with. Okay, let's start with some lights and see if we get some of these areas beginning to work. First of all, I want to be careful that I kind of kill the, the feeling of this these lines being drawn in. So that's why if you go back and paint the surfaces, what happens is you destroy the feeling of them looking just like drawn lines. Because uh, you got to be really careful about that. that. That can really destroy the believability of a painting. All right. So start to add a little bit of light here and there. I think let's start with maybe this area up here. I'm going to go to the unbleached titanium. First thing I have to clean this brush a little bit here. Just dip it in some turp, squeeze it out a little bit so I get most of the paint out of it because I want to stay with this brush right now and because I want to paint these top surfaces. We're going to start right in there. I'm going to take unbleached titanium, which I have, and Naples. And that might be a little too yellow, but if I look right here in the front of in front of this tree, it's pretty good. Another cool way to do this would be would be with a knife behind the rock, out on top. And it's a little, I threw some more ochre into the color because it goes away from the light. That's working okay. I just, I stepped back long enough to see if it was in the right realm, which it is. And I don't want to overdo it or I could over blend it right now, partly because I don't have time, but I want to get the light as it comes down above the edge of that rock and then kind of fades over. Really delicate 
So you see what I, I hopefully you guys can see what I mean when I said the lights help define the form because I've set myself up. In other words, I'm not painting lights on just a flat tone. I actually have some textures, colors back in those tones that mean something. So, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, Elizabeth uh, was saying she hasn't heard of unbleached titanium. Kind of really? Oh, it's been around for a long time. And it's kind of a. It's a, it's a darker, grayer Naples. But it's, it falls in the light realm. So it's kind of nice in that regard. Okay, I'm gonna get this piece of light, that piece of light. That's, and that is actually on um, greenery. So I'm gonna take the unbleached and I'm gonna add a little blue to it. And let's see what happens with this. And maybe some white, because it looks like it's pretty light. It's pretty dry right now, I want it to be. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start right here, right, right here. And I'm gonna work my way up. And some of it sneaks down here. And then we're going to get the same thing, but I'm going to go a little, add more blue to it. I want a little, and a little more ochre. I want a little bit of a darker green characteristic down here. So I can put the lights on it, right? So we're going to put, Want to... Okay, leave it alone. Now let's go into this rock. That's really going to start to help define it. it that, I'm going to go unbleached titanium with a little cool mixed in, maybe not all the way to white, and we're going to start right here. I don't like that happening right there, but we're going to start right there. Work our way down. It gets, look how cool. Cool, it gets down there. So white and blue mixed back into that color I was just using, maybe even a little alizarin to take it a little to the gray violet. And I'm just copying what I see. I'm not changing it a whole lot, I'm not intending, I may be just because I'm off, but I maybe, but I, it's I'm not intentionally trying to change anything. Get a little bit of the top of that rock. Painting rocks, you can. The, the nice thing about rocks is be wrong. And I haven't pushed myself all the way to my brightest light. Keep that in mind. And that's so that I can use it later if I want to. I'm gonna leave that alone right now. And we're gonna move, I've got this. I wanna come right behind, this is really subtle. It might be something you might not even see. Um, but right behind this tree, right here, a little pieces of light. and above this rock. That's where I, sometimes a knife is really good to use in something like this. I'm gonna pick up uh, basically some white into the color I was just using along with some medium. Here's why. I wanna see how far I can push this. There we go. Got a little edge on that. So let's kind of keep moving around. I'm going to go back up in here. There's a little filtered light happening kind of in the ochre range, right about there. Way too, way too bright, but I'm going to keep it. A little here, 
little touches. Be Most people will see these big areas, but they won't look for the little. And it, it all works together, everybody. You can't just do one and not do the other. Um, let's kind of keep going. Right down about here, it starts to get bright again. So I can go back to my brighter color. There, and then top of this rock. I'm going to grab a knife because some of these things are so. If I just take this knife, you can get these real narrow edges going on. And I'm going to scrape back in there. And we're going to, there's a little light happening from above. And I'm going to see what brush is going to be the most effective for that. It might be this. And what am I using? I'm using ochre and white and medium. And we're gonna go right here. And the top of it is a little more green and ochre and maple. No, went too light. Mix it in kind of with some of the browns. I don't wanna to get too bright. A little more medium in it. some oranges back in there too. I just caught them. Do you see a color change? Do it. Just be careful of the value when you when you make a color change. Because the value, you know, you've heard me say value does the work, color gets credit. It's true. The color will be gorgeous if you get the value right. But if you don't get that value right, you know, Color can be pretty, but it's not working as a painting or as a believable um, situation, let's put it that way. So this is that color and texture part of the painting that's gonna really take the time to really achieve what you might hope for. Like I see a lot of warm back in there. So I'm gonna take ochre and the orange and it's pretty dry. Well, Accidental, picked up a color I did not want. Okay. I'm gonna put some brown into it because it's a little too light. There we go. But now I'm sneaking those warms back in the... And usually when I've got the brush loaded like this and it tends to be right, I'll look around to see where else I might need that. Because the brush feels pretty good. A little in here, oh, definitely up in here. So we're getting color movement. I like what's happening here. So I'm gonna take my um, gesso brush and we're gonna go back to the unbleached titanium, a little Naples, and we're gonna try and put in a sliver on the top of that rock. And then it goes up and gets a little bit at the tip of this and then down the front side. Probably I could use a knife and be a little bit better at that. But for right now, I've got this brush in my hand and I'm using it because I don't want to keep switching. A little path comes from right about in here, works its way down. So you see how we're, it's like, it's like we're turning the lights on. And that's what, when I'm, when I personally, when I teach in class, that's exactly how I refer to it. I says, now let's turn the lights on. Set it up. So we're gonna do a little bit of knife work. Went down there, I'm gonna go up here. A little, little brighter color than I want. And there was a little more yellow. Lighter. I'm gonna look at the time, okay. about a half an hour, a little over a half an hour left. So I'm, am I on target? 
I probably I'm probably behind where I would really like to be. I usually am. Oh, I'd like to have two hours left. <laughs> but you know what? If I'm painting on location, I wouldn't. And you learn by editing too. Editing is one of the one of the things that occurs when somebody asked me not too long ago. Uh, how do you keep your work from looking overworked? One of the ways is to practice giving yourself a time limit. In other words, say I'm, I'm only going to I'm going to do a forty minute painting, and then you know, intellectually, you know that a forty minute painting will not have the refinement of a three hour painting. So you have to understand that going in, and in doing so. As you paint, you may have, I shouldn't even say you may, you're going to have decisions. Do I leave it or do I paint more? And sometimes you're going to want it, but you have to decide, is it worth it? Is it worth it? Because I know I've got, I've got to sacrifice something else. Little tiny rocks. What? That was what you talked about last week with this um, quick studies. Yep. That's what, that's literally why I, I, came up with that quick studies and I do it as recreation now, not just um, for teaching. Sometimes I do it, I'll, I'll go out and I'll think, well, I'll give myself an hour. And I'll tell you, sometimes I've come up with better paintings and, 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 I, and I know, because I've been around students, that they will come up sometimes with better paintings in 40 minutes than they will if they spend three hours. You know, and that's why many artists say, uh, you know, it takes, in order to produce a decent painting, it takes someone to paint it, someone to stand behind you and take your brush away at a certain point. And you have to keep moving in these quick ones. You cannot dwell in any one area for too long because once again, if you do, your time's gone. So you have to make your decisions. How much time am I gonna give this? How much time am I gonna give this? Now, granted, to do a really decent painting, there's no time frame. There is no such thing as a time frame. And I think that's an important factor that everyone kind of needs to kind of come to grips with. That a painting could take you a month or it could take you 30 minutes. And a lot of that is just what your intent is and understanding what your intent is. You know, if you're a commission painter and you're gonna paint for somebody, that's a different story. That's a totally different ball game because you're gonna paint to what someone else is hoping. This is kind of that nice gray green area that's not real bright. And but I need enough of it to be able to kind of brush it in and then I'll hopefully have enough time to light it. So I'm doing in what you might call a base tone, carving the edge of that. And as I stand back, the value and the color look right. It's ochre, white, and uh, ultramarine, actually. It's not even sap. This is why I want that, that paint, dry paint in the beginning. So that I can, I'm not using any medium. I'm just kind of letting it almost scrape onto the canvas. But did I just smoke the camera? No, I didn't. Okay. Let's keep going on this. This is, this could be tedious. I'm going to make it not tedious just because I don't have the time to. But if I were painting, I'd probably go back to it several times. In other words, I, I may be able to, we talked about passes. I may only have time to make a, a pass, maybe two at the very most. And, and if I were doing a full on painting, I might make 15 passes. 
hope you guys understand what I mean when I refer to that. I mean, it just means I'll go back to it again and hopefully refine it, do a little touch up, whatever is, I feel is necessary at that particular moment. So I'm letting my eye trail off through here. Okay, that's it's the right color. It's probably, now that I look at it, I can probably brighten it up just a touch. So I throw a little Naples into it, a little bit more blue. I brightened it up just a little bit, okay. I'm gonna move from there and there's some rocks peeking through. So I do need to be able to have time to be able to go back and add some light strokes that might be a feeling of a rock. And I can see it starting to get a pr much prettier shade of a yellow green as we come forward. We wanna go behind this rock dark enough. So I brought some green and brown in. So I went a little darker, more brown. Okay, over here, and there's some nice darks I think I can put in. I'm gonna get that wonderful yellow green in there in a second though. And in shadow, there's one, woof, some nice greens and shadow back in, whoops, a little too blue. and a little bit more green under that. And we'll put them back in here. Yep, yep, there they, it's there. And it's up here. That's just, I'm just adding sap now. Maybe a little blue to the sap. I don't know if you guys can see the variations. I hope you can, it's showing up. Everything's pretty subtle. That's the reason I said that. There's more greenery back here. It seems like it's showing up. It is showing up? I think so. Good. All right, I'm gonna take that same color and whoops, put blue, I didn't mean to. I'm gonna take some Naples and some cad yellow hue into it and some ochre, because it's I could do, I just put the cad yellow hue and then I said, no, it's warmer than that. So I threw the ochre back in. I think that's about right. Real dry. Naples, ochre. Why are you choosing to apply it dry? What? Why are you choosing to apply it dry? Because I'll get that, I'll get more of the texture of that brush quality. If I apply it real wet, then you kind of soften all your edges. In this case, I want the edges to be kind of, that's very dry. Particularly as I'm getting closer, I'm getting a little brighter and I'm getting a little bit more tactile. make it even warmer I throw some orange into it and I didn't mix it in my brush so you can kind of see so as I lay it down it's not going to lay down as a, a color it's going to do like a very variegated type of a color <laughs> bless you yeah, sorry okay I'm I just slid back to catch the value Color choice wasn't too far off, which is actually pretty lucky. Okay, now we're gonna go with a greener green, just more sap in it. And we're gonna pull some of these. No, nope. I need some medium. There we go. Now this time I threw medium into it because I want it to sit on top, not push into the color. And we're gonna start over here with this. Oh, that's almost too green, but 
you know, you push sometimes a little too far and then you have to pull back, which is what just happened. And we're gonna throw some more yellow and Naples into it. A little medium, a little uh, turp this time. We're gonna get some lighter. What size is this piece again? What's that? What size is that again? The size on your canvas? Eight, 18, 24. That's generally what I do. Occasionally I'll do a larger, I, I never do them smaller. Uh, Something I found is for demonstrations, unless you've got an intimate group, um, you really have to work large so people can see what you're doing. So ochre to that color, and we'll kind of come in. There we go. A little bit of I could pop that a little bit later if I have the time, and I want to. I may do this over here. I am going to get this in. This little. And for that, I'm going to start with brown and blue using the same color I was just using with the green that I was just using. And we'll start, I'm going to keep it wet so it lays on top. I do not want it to blend into this color, but we're going to start right about how far out? About, about here. I'm going dark first. Probably I could throw a little more warmth into that. So probably a little brown, maybe a little orange, just to warm it up a little bit. So Laurel has a question. Sure. Um, she wanted to know if you lightened up the large shadow area a little bit. This? Well, it looks like it, it reads that way. Oh, uh, yes, I did. And I and was it intentional? Yes. It, it allows me to show the form off a little bit better. That's good. I'm, I'm glad to see that it, some of that is actually showing up on the screen because I never know how um, accurate the screen is when it does this. Now, I want to break this into the sky a little bit, so I don't want to. OK, now let's add some lights to that. What do you say? So same color, more green, more yellow. I'm gonna get a little bit of a green without going bright. That's brighter than I thought, wow. I didn't think it was that bright. Throw some more ochre into it, okay. Variations, that's what we're looking for. Variations, sometimes light is striking an edge, sometimes it's striking a whole leaf from behind. So we're getting a lot of even subtle color variations. Sometimes it's much more green. Sometimes it's much more yellow. And you know what I like to call that is nature. That's literally what nature is all about. Sometimes it's one way and sometimes it's another. It depends on the way light strikes it. It depends upon its local color. But what we're doing is we're indicating, constantly indicate, indicating, because this is, you know, it's just paint when, you're, when it comes down to it at the very end. That's all it is, it's just paint. So we're trying to make the viewer experience our experiences through the art application, color, value, design, all those things. But in the bottom line, it's, just paint. Oh, well, that's another question. Um, are you careful with the saturation on your greens and how do you control that? I don't try and go too loud too soon. I find if I do, I almost always have to back off. And so the key is hold off on intensity. Um, allow the intensity to build. The intensity and the, the lightness at the same time. Intensity has to do with the, the pureness of a color where the, um, 
what was I what was I referring to? The lightness. The lightness has li literally referred to how light or darker color is. This is that bluish area we tried earlier, and I said I was going to come in and go a little lighter on it. I, interesting textures in that. This is where I've and I met too many of my students will that I have seen deal with polka dots. Because they see it as a bunch of little leaves where I'm trying to indicate the mass of leaves. And I'm only giving this two passes. You know, I just don't have time to give it anymore. So it's okay. It's not quite good. <laughs> it's okay though. It's as okay as it's gonna get in this in this painting. Let's put it that way. Um, I want to come in a little bit of a little bit of dark here. A little now I'm getting a little bit more uh, tactile in my paint. And that's one of the reasons I, I wanted to stay very dry in the beginning, is because I knew for as I move towards completion, I was going to want to get a lot more textural qualities into the paint. So now I'm going to emphasize this rock, but I'm going to keep it cool because I don't want it to be a light. I want it to be kind of like these rocks. So let's see where we're at. It's kind of a, again, a dark blue gray violet, if that makes any sense. It does to me. It makes perfect sense. <laughs> I always know what I'm talking about. I just have to always go, are you, am I making myself clear? Not in a nasty way. But that, what that does is that, and I can find, now I got the color mixed in, right? I told you when you got the color mixed in, where else can I see it? I can see a little bit right there, a little clarification, a little bit up here, a little clarification, right about in here. Little lighter. Well, too light. Too light. Let's go a little lighter here. A little bit right here. And a just sneaking form into the rocks. Okay. That's literally it. Now, let's get uh, these two big rocks up front. Uh, first one is, let's see what I can do. I'm going to try and do this with a knife. And then it goes on the front of the rock. Okay, good enough. Well, I kind of like that scrapiness that I got. I think I just invented a new term. Scrapiness. Scrapiness. And the front of that rock, not quite as bright, but it is bright. There, let's do it again. Okay, close enough. Let's get a little bit of that foliage right there. A little bit more yellow. Paint was too dry, had to add some medium. You de you'll develop that feeling as to whether your paint is too dry or whether you, know, you, you need to uh, add more wet. Now I can see some, some rock pieces sticking through there. I see a big surface and it's cooler now that I see it. I'm gonna add just a tad of blue to that. Okay, let's see what this looks like. Right there, another little rock right in here. Another one up there. Little pieces, little pieces of rock here and there. Some warm, some cool. Warm path. Let's 
starting to come alive. I'm, I'm going to hit hit the ground plane. I need to definitely get that in there. So I think I'll grab one of my gesso brushes. A lot of Naples, ochre. I mean, excuse me, medium, some white. It's probably a little too yellow. Maybe a little bit of unbleached titanium is better. Let's try right here. Well, I like the dryness of it. Oh, there's, that's a rock. Oh, that's kind of nice. Let me make that rock, okay? And that's one part of it. And that's the other part of it. Seeing all these warm, dark areas down in here. That's starting to shape up. But it, it could stand a whole bunch more passes. But we've only got a little over 10 minutes. So I'm not going to get a whole bunch of passes in in 10 minutes. But we'll start to get a little color variation. We got some oranges sneaking back in here. I can see them there. And I got darker versions of those oranges, which is brown. Yeah, more ultramarine, yeah, more umber. I think I do. I didn't put it up right here. Um, let's go with the ground plane again. And in between these two bushes and back in here. Okay. And I'm going to grab some of that brown and a umber because I want to go dark, put some warm darks back in here. There we go. And add some green to that brown so I can get, whoa, I kind of like that. Didn't mean to do that. So now I can intensify the top part of that, the top part of those. And for that, I use a little more yellow and white into the green. And we'll just kind of come in and tickle. Just barely let it hit a few areas. Now, while that, I've got that nice light color, I'm going to throw ochre into that. And I'm going to try and come in on some of these, whoops, maybe a little bit more blue. It still went a little, it went a little light too fast, but I wanted to add a little bit more snap to these. Got to get some oranges because there's really some interesting colors back there. So throw a little orange and brown together. That's a little, little too intense. So you don't want it to look too flat, and which is, is exactly how I'm thinking it's looking at present. It's just looking a little flatter than I want. So I'm, at the very end, very often, I'll take a little brush. I don't think I'm going to take that little of a brush, but let's take the, let's take this number two here that I kind of sketched with. And I'm going to take, I'm going to remix the sky color. So that what it's going to allow me to do is to be able to go back and focus. So we're 
pink. Some people might think of them as tree holes, but whatever you want to refer to them. Like I said, you, I indicated the trees. The more time I have, the more time I'm going to be able to go back and worry about edges. I also see, I just caught this out of the corner of my eye when I got a little bit on the warm side, ochre and warm, right? It's getting some light, probably a little too warm, but. And that same kind of light is happening in here. Before. I'm just thinking <laughs> every now and then I do that. Um, we're gonna, I want that tree to have a little bit more authenticity. Usually don't do not, sometimes people will see 4,000 tree holes. Don't put them all in. If you're painting a location, you can't. I mean, if you're painting your studio, literally you can go back and paint them for the next week and a half if you wanted to. This is where if you paint too far, you paint too much in the beginning, you can always go back and fix it. Even if it's dry at this point. In fact, if it's dry, sometimes it's even easier. So we're getting the effect. And that's, when you paint this quickly or on location, that's all you're gonna get. But it's gonna teach you indication. It's gonna teach you how to make things look believable without overwork them because that's what most people's tendency is, is they just want to put more and more detail into something because they think that that'll make it better. And often it just makes it stiff and hard to really look at. It's so overdone. So I, I often think, you know, it goes back to that less is more concept, the old Bauhaus, but it really is. So I'm just enhancing the lights now. And for that, I'm just using a little bit of white. And uh, what is that? White and Naples. Now I see, I've just noticed as this moves back behind this rock, it gets really warm. So we can take that nice warm right there, get it back behind the rock and then bring it out. And do I wanna, accentuate that rock a little bit. I, you know what's accentuate, what's forcing it is there's a little bit of light here and there, right about here, and then back behind it. Oh, I hate to do it with a little brush like this, but what the heck, that's what I've got in my hand right now. <laughs> little pieces of color. Oh, probably a little brighter than I wanted. It's, I don't like that right now. Why don't I like that? Let me look. Uh-huh. This light needs to come down more here and then work its way down between and from behind this rock. And just so I, I kind of wiped out the strength of that rock so I will take a little piece of 
rock coming through there. Now I messed up on the one rock, which is understandable since I was painting fast and sloppy. Um, so you go back, fix it. That rock, the light on the rock is too thick. Now it's not. You just trim it down. Just about out of time. Yeah. So the effect is close to what I wanted. I can see uh, that I could easily, we got a couple minutes I'm gonna take here. I'm just gonna punch a few things, add a little bit more dimension. Dimension, you add dimension through color and value. And each time you paint, generally you're laying less paint down. Initially, you're laying a whole bunch of paint down. And at each stage, because you've already got so much of it covered, that you're just covering less and less. And I can see a lot of areas that I missed, like back in right around this rock, it's pretty dark. Was, this is I'm having fun now. <laughs> Sorry, it's just right at the end that I'm really starting to get a little gooey and getting some of this stuff to work better. Just pronouncing things. All I'm doing is just constantly defining, redefining through color and value and texture. But I can see right now, just in adding some of those darks up there, I'm starting to pull us back into the painting. Um, and go back into this little rock because I can see a lot more texture. Again, I'll revisit areas. Whoops. Areas such as tones that go behind rocks. In other words, I've indicated some of the lines, but for example, this is darker. Back, whoops, I keep picking up a light color. I don't mean to. So we see how dark that is now? It's way too harsh but I've, I've laid down a good base tone. So if I just take, kind of wipe my brush down, I can go take that same color and let it become a tone. Instead of becoming some clumsy line, it became a tone. And last I was gonna show you, you can come in with your liner if you so desire and don't outline everything, but decide. I want to show a little bit of that crease, that crevice. And a little bit here. So this is that stuff you pull right at the very end. You, you, you gotta be careful. I've gone way too far with this in the past. And that's when you just wipe it out. Again, no such thing as you guys will never do a bad painting. You'll just do unfinished paintings. Nice. Okay. I think that about does it. I could probably work on it for another three, four hours <laughs> and find things to do. But for all intents and purposes, it is is an indication of that particular scene. So again, thanks, Scott. Thanks, Anna. Thanks everyone that watches, whether you watch live or whether you um, catch it later. I appreciate it. Okay. You, you, you make me paint. So thank you all. Bye-bye. Thank you.